All right. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hearthstone uh, High School Star League Hearthstone 2015 Winter Championship. My name is Dratnos. Joining me is Blitzbot V2, uh, and we're going to be casting these games for you today. Let me edit the uh, the old caster thing here. How's it going? I'm good. How about you? How have you been? Pretty good. Pretty good. Excited to uh, to cast this match today between original original Wirt and uh, Zwing. Uh, so let me just tell them they can get started. <laughs> tell them to go when ready. All right. So uh, what kind of decks do you think we'll see from them today? Well, as pretty much everybody knows, League of Explorers is out, or Wing 3 of it, that is. And with that, we have seen the release of Sir Finley Mergurgle 10 <laughs> and cards such as anything can happen and um, I think the other one is everything is awesome you know nice little pun cards yeah I've been seeing some uh, players tinker around with um, basically one turn kill combo decks with anything can happen because if you have like say 
your um, you know blue gills, the Chargers, the two one, the two mana two one Chargers, they yeah. died. And then you have old Murkai who died, and you have a Murloc War Leader who died, and then you use anything can happen. That's a lot of burst damage. All right. Well, it looks like the match is not going to include uh, either of those cards. It's going to be Warrior versus Druid to get started. Uh, we have original Wurt here on the Warrior. Looks like it's a Control Warrior. And Zwing on the Druid up at the top. Uh, looks like a pretty standard mid-range Druid build from him. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Who do you think is uh, is likely to be ahead here? Well, this is a classic, one of those classic matchups in um, basically competitive Hearthstone. You know, mid-range or double combo Druid versus the Control Warrior. Generally, the uh, mid-range Druid is uh, favored versus the Control Warrior because... You can't remove everything as a control player, and Druid has a lot of mid-range threats that are kind of difficult to remove, things like Shredder, Druid of the Claw. You know, you kind of want to be saving your executes and such for things like Boom or Ancient of Lords, but up until then, there's like this mid-game point where, you know, Druid has a lot of just very difficult to remove minions. And eventually, you know, They'll reach a point where they can combo you down, and whoa! Looks like he's gonna go ahead and start off with a uh, innervated out shredder, innervate coin shredder. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's gonna set him up to curve next turn, wild growth, and then the turn after that he can keeper if he needs to. This is an aggressive line. It looks like it's not gonna be punished either. Fiery war axe would be a very good answer to this uh, this line of play, but mm -hmm. original word just doesn't actually have that card. Yeah, he might play. Word might play the armor smith here. Yeah. It, it kind of functions as two mana, gain five life. And also it, it'll enable him to execute that Shredder, which is not what he wants to do, but it might be something he decides he has to do, given that the rest of his hand is this slow. Yeah, that, that's one of the issues with Control Warrior. Sometimes you draw, you know, your weapons. Like, especially versus Druid, you really need your War Axe. Looks like he's going to go ahead and fire off this Execute here on that Shredder instead of casting a Shield Block. And then cast Armor up. Ooh, and uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice making an appearance here. That could uh, allow a combo as early as turn uh, turn 7 without any Innervate help. That's pretty interesting. It looks like we're going to see a Keeper to the face. To the face! Keeper of the Smork. And yeah. face, face. I think uh, uh, that, that makes it pretty clear that he's got nothing else going on and is also pretty likely to have another Keeper in his hand uh, if you're playing as original word here. Looks like he finally draws a weapon. You yeah, know, he's... either Despite or Fiery Wind Axe, or War Axe, <laughs> would have been good. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is pretty much a Fiery Wind Axe, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, especially if you draw it on turn two or It, it would have been so good on turn two, this game. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead, it's it's looking like it's going to be pretty ineffective here. Although, Zwing has just drawn a Darnassus Aspirin. Now, that's a card that does die to this Fiery War Axe. Looks like he's going to decide that he just needs to play it anyways. Uh, just, you know, the, the Fiery War Axe is going to be good at some point. Uh, yeah, right, right now, Zwing, he needs to draw his Ancient of Lores, or Dr. Boom, really yeah. soon. Ancient of Lore would be great, Dr. Boom would be great. If he has Ancient of War in his deck, that would be good. Even, like, just any any kind of big mid range threat. Uh, he's got he's gonna have six mana next turn, so maybe a card like Sylvanas, uh, which has been in and out of Druid decks as of late. Unfortunately, and the problem with playing this Druid deck is that you've got, like, a Wild Growth, an Innervate, uh, another Aspirant that you could draw, all of which would be pretty bad at this point. Looks like he's found a Shade of Nocturamus. All right, it's a serviceable threat. At least it is a threat, and it's good in the matchup. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why the Druid matchup is so tilted in favor of the Druid, because Shade is such an interactive creature. <laughs> you can just <laughs> let it stay in place, and Warriors only run two taunts. Those are the Sludge Belchers, if they run Sludge Belchers. So oftentimes you can let your shade, you know, you can get greedy with it, get it up to like an 8-8, eight, eight, and that's like 10 bonus damage added to your combo. That yeah, the counterplay to that, of course, being Brawl, uh, which is a card that can very much, uh, if, if that just kills a stealth shade or two, can be very good for the warrior, but if it doesn't, then it is uh, a very, very powerful card, the shade is. And let's see if he decides to unstealth it here. Nah, go I wouldn't not. unstealth it. If I were the Druid player, I'd only unstealth it when it's out of a weapon range. Like, out of Despite range, or out of Despite plus its Death Rattle range. If um, Original Word decides to equip the Despite right now. Because, yeah. once you, if you attack with it then, you're guaranteed to remove 
more than enough armor that a um, shield slam alone wouldn't be enough to get rid of the shade. All right, so it looks like Zwing has drawn a swipe here. Uh, that card is not very good in this matchup. He might consider just firing it off on this armor smith. He might also just uh, pass the turn. It's also reasonable. It's kind of an, uh, a difficult spot for him because if he unstealths his shade before it gets up to six, uh, it dies to the death spite. But then if he unstealths it later than six at seven, then it just dies to the big game hunter. Uh, yeah, so... six would be six to, is a really good five or six generally mm -hmm. is a good uh, sort of place to unstealth shades versus warrior. But since he has a death spite equipped and it's about to receive its death rattle. It's not really that great right now. But we see the just a card through heart. The one reason Control Warrior is even back in the game. No. Yeah, this, this card is going to be huge in this matchup because uh, if he can just get a couple of hero powers off with the, the tank up, he'll be out of combo range. Uh, now, honestly, at, at this point, I just play the true heart and armor up. Or, excuse me, tank up. Tank up, yeah. Yeah. You can, you can try and save it for the turn 10 armor up just a card tank up play, but looks like he's just going to... He's he's thinking about just playing it right now, which I, I think is a pretty uh, yeah. It's pretty I, likely to be what he ends up doing. Yeah, right now you have two options: either just a car in hero power or shield maiden in hero power. I'd rather save the shield maiden in hero power, so that if the druid somehow removes all your armor, you have that burst armor gain to sort of combo off with shield slam. Yeah, well, you can't really do that with um, just a car. Also, just the earlier you get just a car in play, the more effective it's going to be. Uh, yep. Because, you know, and any time you would hear a power after the turn where you played either Shield Maiden or Justicar, you're going to get more value if you played the Justicar first. And we see that swipe coming down at last, getting rid of that Justicar, but also giving Original Work two armor in the process. Yeah, that is a lot of armor, and again, the, this Shade just can't really unstealth this turn. You know, it can't even unstealth next turn if he doesn't kill off that Armorsmith somehow, because then the Death Spite uh, plus the Armorsmith will be enough to kill it. You know, I dropped... I would have dropped... You know what the uh, Zwing could have done? He could have dropped the Darnassus Aspirant, and then he would have been at 10 mana, which would have allowed him to cycle off the Wild Growth the previous turn. Yeah, absolutely. That seems like it uh, was something that he could have done for more value. Looks like he was just trying to get as many hero powers in as possible, right? Because that wouldn't allow him to use a hero power. Yeah, but at this point, I think cycling card earlier would have been more important than just... Yeah, I, I, hero I'm fine to agree. And it would have sort of, you would have been able to get rid of the, um, the armor smith this turn too, if you decided to hero power by trading and, um, with the Darnus Aspirant and then hero powering it down. Yeah, it would kind of demand another answer if he wants to remove that armor smith. Alright, looks like he's going to decide to play the, the Aspirant this turn. And, you know, maybe if, if there's like Emperor Thorisan in his deck, he can go ahead and, uh, wait until such a time as he can Emperor a hand with, like, Force Force Roar Roar and try and kill his opponent with that, with, like, an Innervate as well. It's a possibility, I don't know. I, I'm not sure exactly what he's going to be able to do to win from this position. Maybe he just needs to draw, like, Ancient of Lores uh, in a row? Yeah, double Ancient of Lores in a row would be really good. But at this point, a Sludge Belcher behind... or an Armorsmith behind a Sludge Belcher is probably one of the strongest things you could do as a warrior, one of the best defensive positions. It, at this point, you have a damaged shade. You know, that's in BGH range. You only have two Force of Nature's in hand and a swipe and a... That's uh, Living Roots, I want to say. Oh uh, yeah, Living Roots, yes. of course, being the it's newest just, addition to Zwing's hand. It's a, Living Roots is a really good card in the early game, but, you know, turn 10 and onwards, not, not that great. It's... Right now, the warrior's pretty much solidified and stabilized his position while the druid's kind of hungering for card draw and actual threats to play. He, he's able to get rid of the first half of this belcher, though. Yeah, if he wants to. He would have to use his shade to do that, though. It looks like maybe he's thinking the only way he can win the game is with that shade hitting for, like, 11. Looks like it's, uh, the time, the time for waiting is over, though. Original War's just gonna throw down the, uh, Gromash Hellscream. Not enrage it, just hide it behind the Sludge Belcher and start getting in there for four. Yeah, some uh, Druids, they do run a uh, big game Hunter in the deck. Some more aggressive lists have chosen have chosen to cut it. But looks like he's fearing the big game Hunter. Yeah, I, I think when you see Wild Growth, it's pretty likely that there is, in fact, a big game Hunter in the Druid list. 
Yeah, right Right now at this point, I, I don't really see any way the druid can come back. Unless, for some reason, Wurtz plays another minion, and then Zwing has a mind control tech and steals a Gromash, and... That would be maybe one way of doing it? Yeah, maybe there's a... Uh... <laughs> I don't know, like, maybe he can draw Ancient of Lore, and that draws him, like, Aviana, Kalthazad, and Ancient of War. And then he draws an Innervate as well. Or, or he has, like, Deathwing. Yeah, Deathwing, maybe. <laughs> I, I'm not even sure Deathwing gets him back into it. Oh, yeah, like, uh, original execute, Word has, yeah. has Taskmaster Execute and BGH, so he would need many, many Deathwings, I think, to get through this. Looks like he's just going to use uh, the old Swipe and then a Force of Nature to clear here. Uh, he's not going to get to clear effectively unless he wants to use his Shade on that Gromash, which uh, does not feel good. Looks like he might have to. It looks like he might be forced to play a, a slow, controlly game here as the Druid, which is not something he's equipped to do. Oh, okay, he got the last trade in. Although, technically it was a mistake to kill the Gromash before the Armorsmith, because he the, ar the Warrior got one more armor. But yeah, uh, when the Warrior's like... sitting at 54 effective life... You know, this game would just be so much closer if he was at 53. <laughs> Is, uh, yeah. is not really the case. Looks like uh, kind of the last the last wave of, of minions from Zwing is coming out here in Lotheb and uh, Druid of the Claw. Looks like Druid of the Claw is taking 32 here. That is gonna, oh. That's barely going to kill it here. This is very interesting. Looks like um, Original Wart does run Deathlords as a sort of anti-aggro tech card in his list. Yeah, the nice thing about Deathlord is it's very good against aggressive decks, like super aggressive decks, but it's also very good against super defensive decks. Um, it's also it great versus control. Yeah. yeah, especially in con versus the control mirrors, since control warrior mirrors always go to fatigue. They they always will, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, certainly, you know, in upper up upwards of ninety five percent of the time, a control warrior matchup does end up in fatigue. And cards like getting Death Lords are so yeah, huge. Getting a card out of their deck, basically forcing them to draw, while you're not drawing, is it's like. I just want to say game winning. It's, it's basically game winning. It deals something like 20 damage to them. It's uh... eventually later on in the game. But yeah, that's eventually how it is. All right, now if comes there's... the Ancient of War. That was a great draw for Zwing. You know, he's uh, he's maybe going to be able to run through all this removal if he can just keep drawing big threats. The problem is that Original Wart's deck is also full of great cards to draw at this point. There aren't that many dead cards in it. Yeah. Also, if he does have another cruel, t he probably does have another cruel taskmaster left in his deck. Which he can combo off with the big game hunter on any of these five attack minions. Yeah, that that would be a, an effective combination. He can also just save that big game hunter for the Doctor Boom that is invariably in Zwing's deck somewhere. Ooh, Baron Geddon. Interesting. We'll have hmm. to see. It doesn't look like he can make use of that here. It looks like he's just gonna go ahead and hit and execute the Ancient of uh, of War. And then he might play something like a Shield Maiden and tank up to contest the Lotheb. Yeah. And down it goes, yeah. Still got 25 armor here on top of 22 life. That is uh, more than enough to keep him out of range. Goes up to 30 armor now. Oh, there's that Ancient of Lore. Yeah, that's good. Let's take a look at the deck sizes here. There are 9 cards left in the Druid's deck, uh, and 11 oh, card left in... Uh, 7 Ancient cards Lords. left now. Yep, so now uh, he's oh, down he to... Oh, does have combo. Yeah, so he's drawn one of his two uh, Savage Roars. There is another Savage Roar and another Innervate in his deck, so he might be able to win with Force, Innervate, Roar, Roar, uh, that... if he can get a board. If I recall correctly, that combo is uh, it's gonna 22 be... damage on its own. Yeah, 22 plus 4 for each other minion that you have in play. Yep. Uh, yeah. So that, that can be a lot pretty quickly. If you just have two 5-5s five in play, that ends up being uh, 40 damage. Uh, but it's looking unlikely that he'll be able to actually survive until such a time as that board state develops. Like, I mean, it looks unlikely that the warrior is going to allow him to keep even that kind of board, and he'll be able to draw... Uh, Force of Nature, or the, the second Roar in the Innervate in time. However, this is, you know, this is good for the, uh, for Zwing here, Zwing's Druid. He has drawn that second Savage Roar. His Ancient of Lore has lived here. Uh, and, you know, even though his opponent's gaining four each turn, if he can just pick off a little bit of that, he might be able to do it with the, the biggest combo available. Mm. I, I think he just... Did Zwing play? Okay, he's connected. Yeah, so... Yeah, playing the second Ancient of Lore seems like the only play available. Although you kind of have to be worried about getting to fatigue. Yeah. Especially since the warrior is at 55 HP. I mean, the, uh, the warrior's already got 
uh, the warrior only has nine cards in his deck, but you only have six cards in your deck if you're uh, looking at Zwing's perspective here. So I think you got to just try and draw out here. Oh, it looks like he's not going to, though. looks like he's just going to use the Ancient of Lore uh, to heal his other Ancient of Lore out of Execute range, uh, out of, you know, damage effect plus Baron Geddon range, uh, out of Fiery War Axe range, I guess. Oh. It looks like uh, original work doesn't have to be defensive anymore. Yeah, here's the good doctor. We'll have to see if that makes an appearance. Yeah, down he comes. He's going to use Shield Slam to kill uh, the second Ancient of War. Plays Dr. Boom, tank up again. He's uh, trying to hit that hero power every turn, and he's been pretty effective uh, so far. Zwing is going to draw a Wrath, which uh, could combine with his Ancient of War to take down that 7-7, but it's unclear how he can win the game if he does that. It's also unclear how he can... Uh, Win the game regardless of what he does <laughs> at this point. That, that is true. Um, if he does have a big game hunter in his deck, he can choose to cycle for it with the Wrath. He has a 20% chance of drawing it. Yeah, there's also, uh, I think, the second Wild Growth. Oh, no, the second Wild Growth was cycled, and the first Wild Growth was cast for mana. So he doesn't have any of those left in his deck. Uh, so presumably his deck looks something like Innervate, uh, maybe Emperor. a big game hunter, maybe an Emperor. Uh, I think the second Wrath might still be in there. No, he already used one Wrath previously. Okay. Uh, maybe if he has a second Ancient of War that's in there, although one is a pretty common number for that card. Boombot's going to go three damage to the Ancient of Lore, which is a pretty good result for Zwing since he's trading that off anyways. And he's going to use Wrath for three and the, the Ancient to take down Dr. Boom. Back over to the Warrior now, starting his turn with 31 armor. So I'm sure he'll be ending it with more than that. Well, that's an interesting draw here. That can actually hold off the combo. Uh, if he got to a point where he would be vulnerable to it, which doesn't look like it's going to happen. It's actually a very interesting uh, card tech in uh, in the Control Warrior. Generally, when you use Lothip, you're, you're basically hitting spells, right? And there are two classes that, you know, spells you have to worry about. There's things like Freeze Mage, or Mage in general. Yep. And, you know, Druid with the combo. Generally, Druid games, Druid versus Warrior games, will go one of two ways. The Druid will either combo for the win, turn 9 or earlier, or it'll be like this, where the Druid is basically on life support. Yeah. But hasn't conceded yet. Um, you know, Control Warrior is already one of the... It's literally the counter to Freeze Mage. Yeah, you definitely aren't playing Lothab to improve your Freeze Mage matchup, because uh, yeah, it just, it's, it's not it's necessary already there. Yeah, you, the games you lose to Freeze Mage are just the games where you draw atrociously, and they draw great. Yep. And versus, and you kind of, and the games are also similar in a way to um, the way Druid get, matches work out versus other like Tempo Mage variants and the like. So you, you don't really need Lothep because you're not really afraid of any spells. You, if you're going against Freeze Mage, you're like, sure, yeah, send all the fireballs at me. I'm down to 15 armor. Okay, get deal the rest of the damage. Yeah. <laughs> and versus Druid. You're either dead, or you're at this point of the game where, you know, your armor point is so high, it literally does not matter. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be relevant some games, but I, I agree that it's not likely to matter that many yeah. uh, times against Druid. Alright, so he's going to start with an attack on the Death Lord to the Boombot. Boombot will end up dealing one damage to Original Word's face. And he's going to fire off that Big Game Hunter, send Lotheb upstairs, and tank up once again. He's not going to cast his Shield Block here, anticipating the game going to Fatigue. Uh, There's that Innervate, so he does have Force Innervate Roar Roar, uh, which is not going to come quite close to dealing the 64 damage that would be necessary to kill the Warrior, even if the Death Lord wasn't in play, so really 68 damage. I mean, the thing is, in um, Conquest mode, if you're the losing player, or this is kind of like a high-level tournament meta strategy. If you're losing and there's like absolutely 0% chance of you ever winning a game, it's far easier, or excuse me, one of the winning plays is to concede at that point. So that you don't reveal to your opponent what other cards are in your deck so that they don't know what to play around. Yeah, I think that's more relevant with, uh, with decks that are less... You know, like, it, when you're playing a Druid deck, you're basically required to have double combo and Druids of the Claws and that kind of card. So I don't think he's going to give any information that Original Wirt wouldn't have already assumed was in his deck. But it is certainly something that's worth thinking about. And he's going to go ahead and cycle that Shield Block now. Not too worried about uh, being the loser in Fatigue. He uses Death Bite here to clear off that Druid of the Claw. So Zwing drawing his last card now. 
We'll have to see if he can figure out a way. There it is. There's the Emperor Thorson. Not the card you want to be on the bottom of your deck. Uh, so, wow. He, he actually maybe did have the possibility to to do a, a very powerful burst turn, but didn't end up drawing the cards in the right order. So that's going to be game one going to original Wurt. A very long game one. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. A, a typical Control Warrior game one. Uh, once again, I am Dratnos, casting alongside me Blitzbot V2. I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. Uh, Twitch, Newegg, Rockat, MSI, uh, and Blizzard, of course. Along with Jinx Apparel and Loot Crate. Thank you for helping to make the stream uh, possible. We'll be getting into game two in just a moment here. Uh, Original Wirt, of course, no longer allowed to play his Control Warrior deck. Uh, knowing that Druid is in Zwing's lineup, I wonder if that's going to affect what deck he's likely to bring next. And I wonder if Zwing will go ahead and fire off the Druid a second time, uh, or if he'll switch to one of his other decks and save the Druid for later. Uh, what do you think is, is likely to happen there? What is... Uh... What were the lineups? I, I don't think I ever got sent the lineups. Yeah, I, I don't have them either, so uh, ah. we'll have to kind of figure it out as things go. It's pretty likely that uh, the Druid is, is likely to be in both players' lineups, just because that is such a, a powerful tournament deck. Uh, so it's possible that Original Wirt, if he's brought that, would move to it now. Looks like we're just getting on into game now. We'll figure out the, uh, the answer to this question for you. Looks like it's going to be Mage versus Warlock. So Original Wirt on the Mage. Uh, of course, the winner of the first uh, first game. He's on Tempo Mage. And Zwing looks like he's on Zoo Warlock. Uh, so what do you think about this matchup? Well, generally, Zoolock is one of the dominant counters to Tempo Mage. You can use things such as Nerubian Eggs and, you know, Abuse of Sergeants to counter Mirror Entities. Um, you, you have a lot of sort of good stuff that, you know, the Temple Mage can't really deal with. Yeah, and the, like, Flame Waker is not particularly effective against you. Uh, yeah, as, as Flame Waker is actually is. worse. Yeah, because against... you, have, you have these sticky minions, these eggs, that you don't actually want the Flame Waker's missiles to hit, and you just have so much toughness, because Zoo is all about just putting a lot of stats on the board as efficiently as possible. Uh, so it looks like he's going to go ahead and fire off a Dark Peddler, pick up a Mortal Coil. Uh, he's thinking that might end up being useful this game. Yeah, Dark, Dark Peddler Pe card we're seeing a lot of play, actually, uh, in many different Warlock variants. Very powerful card. Yeah, right now, um, this looks like a very great turn for Zwing, because he can trade the Dark Peddler into the 1-2 Mana Worm, trade the um, Void Walker into the 2-2, two -two, then Mortal Coil it, then... Then drop the Nerubian egg, or I guess not. He looks like he's going to decide to keep around a one-one taunt rather than a two-one with no taunt. Uh, also of note, to keep the Voidwalker around, demon synergies might be a possibility, or maybe he just uh, wanted to not trigger cards like duplicate or effigy on the uh, manworm. I'm guessing he values the one-one taunt over the. Uh... Yeah, I mean, if either of them is going to be that relevant, it'll get pinged anyways, so yeah. it's not likely to be that relevant. Looks like ping is exactly what is going to happen to that poor Voidwalker, so... Uh, pretty... It, it, it can't have been that bad, right? Because uh, as assuming it got pinged, it was probably the right one to keep around. Or maybe either one would have gotten pinged. Yeah, at, the, at that point, it wouldn't really have mattered. If, but I guess it sort of accomplished what Zwing wanted anyways, which was to slow the Tempo Mage down. And the secret that Original Word has actually pulled out of his deck with the Mad Scientist here is Counterspell. Uh, so that's going to be very good against those Implosions here. Looks like Implosion is actually the card that Zwing is thinking about playing as well. This is going to be a huge uh, swing in tempo here towards yeah. Original Word. Or Implosion, of course, getting countered. Yeah, I don't... Fires off the I'm sorry as well. <laughs> BM game is strong. Yeah. And now he gets to play his Sorcerer's Apprentice and his Mirror Entity. Uh, and he gets to keep this hand full of Flame Waker and Burn and a coin... Uh, for a time when it might be better than with a Nerubian Egg on the board. Yeah, I don't really know uh, why um, Zwing... He tested for Mirror Entity last turn by playing the Nerubian Egg. He yeah. found out that it wasn't Mirror Entity. So... Maybe he thought it was Duplicate or Effigy. Or maybe he actually wa wanted to get the uh, the first Implosion Counterspelled so that he could play the second Implosion this turn and not have it get Counterspelled. 
Mirror Entity going to trigger on that Voidwalker. Not the end of the world for Zwing. Uh, although it is annoying that his 1-3 Voidwalker does pretty poorly against the Sorcerer's Apprentice. So he's going to remove that with an Implosion. Implosion for 4 as well. That is a big game right there. Lots of imps. And it looks like Original Ward's going to wait another turn before pulling the trigger on his Flame Waker. Uh, it is annoying that there is that Nerubian Egg on the board, but there are so many other targets at this point that it's pretty unlikely it's going to get popped by his missiles. So he's going to fire off a Life Tap. And he's thinking about putting another Nerubian Egg on the board. That would make Flame Waker a lot worse uh, from oh, yeah. original Wurt. Right now, Zwing's in an awkward position since that Voidwalker also does well versus all these 1-1 one -one imps. Yeah, he can't even play any more minions until some of his trade-off. Luckily, he, uh, of course, has an outlet for trading off his minions if he wants to now. So it looks pretty likely that he'll want to uh, send two of his imps into the Voidwalker, send his Voidwalker into the Voidwalker, and then send the other two of his imps upstairs, uh, right at Original Wurt's face. Yeah, yeah, that seems like a... Maybe he's play. thinking about sending one imp or the Voidwalker... Yeah, sending one imp to the Voidwalker, and then silencing the Voidwalker with his owl, and sending the rest of his creatures uh, at the Azure Drake. I think if he'd wanted to do that, though, he might have wanted to uh, play the owl before the egg, yeah. so that he would be, end up being able to... Uh, to keep the Voidwalker around rather than keeping an Imp around, which is what would be required by that strategy. So it looks like he's just going to fire off the Owl to remove that spell power. That's going to be pretty effective against cards like Arcane Missiles that would otherwise be uh, fire off extra missiles against Zwing's board. Original Word's going to start by attacking the uh, Voidwalker with his Drake and very quickly fires off uh, a Mana Worm, a Mirror Entity, and a Ping onto the 2-1. And it, it actually looks like he's got the board here uh, pretty well under control, at least as far as it goes here. The issue with playing that um, the owl and the egg last turn was that you don't really have any more good plays left in your hand against mere entity. So right now, that's most likely a mere entity that's out in play, and I guess you could tap first. Yeah, you could also just plan to get Defender of Argus. Yeah, play Defender Steve's. of Argus. In which case then, you would tap first, yeah, since you you would tap anyways with that line. But it is pretty annoying that this blocks you from playing Dr. Boom. However, you wouldn't have been able to play Dr. Boom anyways, because you still would have needed two mana for the Owl. So, oh, giving your so. opponent a 2-3 versus giving him a 2-1, a uh, not a huge difference. Out comes the Defender. Puts the buff on both of his eggs. He's gonna. He's decided that he's not going to wait around for Original Wurt to pop him with his Flame Waker. And he's going to force the issue. Yeah, he can remove everything except for the Defender of Argus this turn. If he decides to use the PO. And he's going to put the PO on an Imp. Send that Imp over at the, uh, the Astro Drake. So it looks like he's valuing keeping his eggs around. Which is actually a pretty smart play because those eggs are very, very annoying. Much more annoying than the 4-4s four actually that come out a lot of the time. <laughs> out comes the Dr. Boom. He's going to have to decide now, original word is, whether or not he actually wants to pop one of the eggs. Looks like he decides not to. Uh, so Zwing's play of keeping those eggs around is paying off here. And he does have a big game hunter in his hand for that Doctor Boom. Big game hunter seems he could get rid of the Defender of Argus. Yeah, it's possible that he'll want to clear off those Boom bots as many as he is planning to before playing his big game hunter because the four two body uh, is probably something you don't want on the board until after those Death Rattles trigger. The question is: Is he going to play the Defender of Argus this turn too, or is he going to decide to dig for something? Looks oh. like he's. Thinking about playing the Defender of Argus, this actually enables some pretty good trades for him. So he can now use his 3-4 to trade with that 2-3. And then he has eggs on both the Boom Bots, pretty likely. There's, of course, a chance that the Boom Bot will kill the other egg before it gets the chance to attack. He's going to start with the 2-2 on the Boom Bot. And uh, 2 damage goes on to the new Defender of Argus. Now he's going to trade the old egg, or the small egg. And that new Defender of Argus is going to die to the Boom Bots. But all in all, not a disastrous turn of events uh, as far as Boom Bots can go. Out comes Flame Waker number two. All right, so if Original Wurt can maybe uh, survive a couple turns, pick up some more cheap spells, he might be able to make a turn where he fires off 20 missiles or something. Yeah, maybe perhaps ping the big game hunter, decide to take 4, 8, 10, 13 damage, and then next turn just... Flame Waker, Flame Waker, Frostbolt, Frost Coin, Coin one or two out. drop that you draw. Yeah, so that would allow him to fireball the 4-4 four, four this turn. Uh, which is yeah. probably something that he does need to do. And pinging the BGH does make some sense. Yeah, he might also... You definitely don't want to ping the egg, I guess. Which is uh, pretty annoying. Looks like he's going to decide to ping the taunt creature, maybe, instead of the big game hunter. 
So uh, I, I, yeah, he should just ping the big game hunter because that means it only needs to die to one source of damage, whether that's from the ping or. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think the taunt is not particularly relevant. Doesn't look like original work's going to have attacking creatures uh, in the near future. Out comes another life tap from Zwing. He's dealt six damage to himself this game as the only sources uh, of damage to himself. Out comes that doctor. His own Dr. Boom. And Original Wart does not have that big game hunter that so effectively answers that card. Does draw an Ethereal Conjurer, but he's got to be worried if he tries to do that about just dying before he can uh, actually put it to use. So looks like he's going to go Flame Waker, Flame Waker, coin, and fireball that big, the, uh, the big Dr. Boom. Hope he's going to send off uh, a total of eight missiles. Ooh, Flame Waker almost dies there. That would have been a pretty disastrous and uh, countered two of his missiles. Oh, the other Flame Waker does die as well. Those Boombots did oh. a lot of work. Yeah, the Boombots from... Uh... Yeah, the Boombots from Zwing did much more work than the Boombots from Wart. To see. be fair, they were they were set up to do more work. Like, so. the board they were against was more susceptible to them. But yeah, it certainly ended up being very big. Out comes a Dark Peddler. He's going to get a choice between Voidwalker, Blood Imp, and Injured Gvaldir. Picks the Voidwalker. I, I think at this point, you'll just... I should just... You should just tap... Play all your one drops. Maybe trade the. Um... Ooh, and he's gotten the second Doom Guard. That's uh, not great. He yeah. could have, instead of tapping and playing all of his one drops, played all of his one drops and then played his Doom Guard without any cards in his hand. That might have uh, also been something worth considering. I guess that might have overextended into something like Flame Strike. Uh, although Doom Guard does survive Flame Strike. It does. Looks like he's just going to hold that Abusive Sergeant, though, until he can get more value with it. Pretty pretty reasonable play, given that there's not currently a, a good place for original Wurtz ping to go. Looks like he's going to need to discover into something great here. Maybe Frost Nova and then draw something great next turn. Cone oh. of Cold, Flame Strike, and Echo of Medivh are available. Alright, so Cone of Cold can do a pretty reasonable uh, impersonation of Frost Nova here, uh, if you would like that. Looks like he's going to just pick the Flame Strike and use Frostbolt to buy another turn for him. Uh, this is going to be pretty rough for him if the, uh, the Doom Guards can come down here. In fact... There's a possibility that he's just going to die here. Five, oh, six. Oh, my goodness. So Zwing is going to be able to do six, seven, eight, 13 damage with Abusive plus Doom Guard. He could get a kill if he plays Doom Guard and doesn't discard Doom Guard. Looks like instead he's just going to play Malganus, uh, which does add four attack to the board. And then Abusive Sergeant adds another two if he'd like. Pretty unlikely that there are any si secrets left in Original Wurt's death deck for the uh, Mad Scientist to pull out. There might that... be one more counter spell. But that would be double counter spell, double mirror entity. That's a lot of secrets. It's a possibility though, yeah. yeah. And looks like he's not gonna pop it. We may or may not find out. Uh, if you're Original Wurt, you probably don't want to pop it either because you don't want to tell your opponent how many secrets are in your deck. Like looks like the flame strikes coming down, and this actually. Uh, does not allow him to clear the board, though, does it? No, not quite. So he's oh. going to die to this Malganus. Pretty close, though. One more damage uh, from his Flame Strike, and he would have been able to clear the board. Although he would have died to the Doom Guards in the hands. Yep. Down goes Original Wurt, so the match is now tied at 1-1. One to one. Uh, Original Wurt still has a Tempo Mage in his lineup. Zwing still has a Midrange Druid in his lineup. What do you uh? What do you think if if those two decks come to play, which of them would be favored? The Tempo Mage, because things like Mirror Entity are really good versus Druid. You know, if you get to copy a Druid of the Claw or a Shade, actually, if you copy a Shade, your Shade, the copied Shade, grows faster than the original Shade. <laughs> so yeah, and like Druid really has no sort of outside of Darnassus Aspirant, they really have no good Mirror Entity crockers. And, you know, oh. Looks like it's going to be Mage <laughs> versus Mage. This is the Tempo Mage Mirror. All right, so Zwing is going to show his final deck here, uh, which is that Tempo Mage. So his lineup is Tempo Mage and Midrange Druid. Uh, and Original Wart has Tempo Mage and one unknown deck still left in his repertoire. Very exciting matchup. This, this can go, this is one of the swingiest matchups in Hearthstone. Uh, the player that gets on the board first with Mana Worms often wins. But Original Word also has the coin, which can yeah. change things a lot. Absolutely. Coin, one of the greatest cards in this matchup uh, by a lot. Being being act Playing second is also huge. Really, just whoever can get a good start going uh, is likely to win. But if you're going second and you have a slightly better start than your opponent, it's also huge. Uh, 
so it's it's uh it's a very interesting matchup, actually. We'll have to see how it plays out here. Looks like Zwing is going to start off with a, a favorable board here with that 2-3 Mana Worm. And Original Warp might be forced to spend his turn reactively Frostbolting it. You know, I just played the Frostbolt here. Looks he like he might be coining out Arcane Intellect. Weird. Yeah, looks like he's really digging for maybe some specific cards that he's got as part of his plan to interact with us. And he actually does draw a Sorcerer's Apprentice, so that's going to let him go Apprentice Frostbolt next turn. Zwing, of course, though, able to deploy Mirror Entity or Flame Waker. Looks like since there's an Arcane Missiles in his hand, he's going to go ahead and cast the Mirror Entity, uh, allowing him to play uh, Flame Waker and Arcane Missiles next turn if he wants to, uh, for five missiles, which is a lot. Doesn't look like Original Word has much of a choice here, except for Sorcerer's Apprentice uh, and Frostbolt. Looks like he could also play Arcane Missiles uh, in addition. 50% chance to destroy his opponent's Sorcerer's Apprentice. Out it comes. Three damage, randomly being split. First one, and the, on the third one, oh, it does kill the got uh, it. the apprentice. That is great. For Hearthstone, heroes of our esports. <laughs> Zwing, of course, a little bit more likely for his arcane missiles to kill off the sorcerer's apprentice, although not guaranteed. And it does kill it with the missiles themselves, not with Flame Waker's assistance. Back over to original word. Looks like he's just going to spend his turn frost bolting and pinging the Flame Waker. Decides that that is a threat that just needs to go. He's probably yeah. not wrong. And he's probably looking at the hand size of Zwing. Like, Zwing has a very small hand right now. He can't really do much. Not only and... does Zwing have a small hand, Original Wurt has two 5-drop uh, cards that generate insane advantage in Azure oh, yeah. and Ethereal Conjurer. So he's decided that if he just takes the controlling role this game, uh, he's going to have a lot more value in the cards in his hand. Zwing, on the other hand, has a 7-drop in his hand in Dr. Boom, but not really anything proactive to do until then, and it might be too late by the time he can get that into play. Yeah, probably drop um, Ethereal Conjurer and Mana Worm this turn. Looks like he's instead going to decide to go Mana Worm and Unstable Portal. If he gets something good, he can play that. Otherwise, he could play Mirror Entity. Looks like it is going to be Mirror Entity. Ooh, and Frost oh. Elemental. That's actually going to be pretty effective this game, in all likelihood. Frost Elemental on, like, a 7-7 is uh, very serious business. Speaking and of 7-7, seven, seven, Zwing can't play his Dr. Boom unless he wants to give uh, Original Wart a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, and that might not be too bad for Zwing, given that he does have Fireballs in hand to answer that 7-7, seven, seven, but, uh, you know, it, it's certainly not a favorable thing to do. The problem is that if he doesn't play the Dr. Boom this turn, it's not like he has any minions in his hand that uh, are better to play next turn. He doesn't have any minions in his hand at all, so he, he would need to rely on the top of his deck delivering him a minion that he could play. And this is actually going to go disastrously for him because of that Frost Elemental. Oh yeah, the Frost Elemental... Yeah, you can either choose to freeze the Dr. Boom and go face with your own 7-7, or simply trade and freeze off one of the Boom Bots. The trading play is kind of a safer play, since you're at less HP. Yeah, although he does... Yeah, and he's got to probably assume, actually, that some of those cards in Zwing's hand are burn spells, given that he hasn't played them and has had a lot of extra mana in these past couple turns. Out comes Ship's Cannon. Unfortunately, I don't think there are any pirates that Tempo Mage plays, although he could get some off of, like, a Shredder or something. Now it comes a Fire Blast. Ooh, lucky that the Fire Blast did not kill his Mana Worm. Given that Mana Worm is going upstairs, it, it's possible that he should have attacked before picking off that Boom Bot with it, uh, in the off chance that it did die to it. Back over to Zwing now. Zwing's thinking about firing off a Fireball. He is going to do just that. Probably it's like he's the... going to use both. Yeah. Fireball the 5-5, five, five, Fireball the Blooms, trade in the Boom Bot, hopefully get rid of something. So if you're worried, on the one hand, you're sad that your board died, but you're also happy that there are two Fireballs that are not in your opponent's hand anymore. Oh, I, I think, um... Okay, like yeah, Fireball. I really want to see the Ethereal Conjurer go down. Yeah, that card uh, is <laughs> another nice new card been seeing a little bit of play in various mage strategies. I've also seen it in, like, uh, control mage strategies that are based around just getting a lot of value off of cards like Duplicate and stuff. Sludge Belchers and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. And here we see the Azure Drake come down. Yeah, and it draws actually Find into a worm. piloted Shredder. Looks like Zwing is uh, is facing down just too much damage, though, to deploy that, that value card in piloted Shredder. He's gonna have to fire off his missiles here and hope that some of them go at those two health targets. Only one to each of them. He's going to ping the Mana Worm. So he's not dead, but he's pretty close to it. Oh, he could die. Ethereal Conjurer 
could bring out a fireball. Yeah, fireball would certainly do it. Vaporize, Spellbender, and Mirror Entity. Three secrets available to Zwing. Spellbender unlikely to be uh, any more f uh, that particularly effective. It's kind of a poor man's counterspell. Uh, given mirror Entity opponents. is probably the best one. Yeah, well, so he's going to cast a Mirror Entity, cast a Mad Scientist, uh, send his Sorcerer's Apprentice into that Mana Worm, get a good value trade there, and send his Ship's Cannon upstairs. Unfortunately, the Ship's Cannon not getting to trigger very much. Fortunately, the 2-3 body is still useful on this board. Azure Drake's going to go ahead and trade into that Conjurer. Mad Scientist going to give uh, both players a Mad Scientist. And out comes Piloted Shredder as well. So the boards are pretty close here, but the life totals tell a different story. Uh, with Original Warp being this far ahead, he's likely to be able to just send all of his minions right at Zwing's face uh, and just put him at a point where he has to clear the board entirely to not die. I mean, at this point, you know, oh, I guess it doesn't matter because it's a fireball, but you know your opponent used both fireballs, so you could just go face and pink face, and Zwing would have died in a couple turns just from the hero power alone. But the the top deck fireball kind of yep, fireball more than enough to end the game here. Uh, that's going to be in favor of Original Wirt, who now uh, needs to show up with his final deck against either Tempo Mage or Mid Range Druid from Zwing. We'll have to see which of those ends up being the deck that Zwing chooses. Let it's, me briefly... unfortunate. Mm -hmm. it's unfortunate they didn't tell us the lineups, otherwise be able to sort of give commentary on, um, on basically... exactly, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think that might be available somewhere, but this is the first time I've been casting here, so I, I don't really know all of the, uh, <laughs> the secret tech available. All right, so we're back in game now. Uh, we have original work on his druid deck of his own, uh, as we assumed earlier, given how powerful the deck is, uh, against the tempo mage from Zwing. Uh, so you think this is a favorable matchup for Zwing, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I don't know about keeping the uh, arcane missiles, but scientist is always good. Drawing secrets, not that great. Yeah, drawing secrets is a huge disaster in this deck. It's one of the most common ways to lose is Tempo Mage. It's just, you know, you mulligan some marginal cards and you just draw a secret or two. And you're, uh, not only do you have these inefficient secrets in your hand, but your mad scientists also don't do anything later in the game. Luckily, there are still, of course, uh, two secrets in his deck, at least, in the counterspell. Oh, wait, no, it was original Wirt that had the counterspell in oh, his yeah. version of Tempo Mage. So we don't actually know Zwing's full secret package. All right, so Zwing... Ooh. Draws another Mana Worm, so he could do something like Mana Worm, Coin, Coin Scientist. Scientist. Yeah, Actually, and then he would have like that. two two threes. He could also just play a Scientist, keep that coin for Flame Wakers in the future if he thinks that's important. Uh, if you don't have Flame Wakers in hand, I don't really like sort of saving spells for them. But we did see an Archmage Antonidas in his opener. So that's one thing he might be um, sort of saving the spells for. Looks like Azure Drake gonna come down for original Wirt here uh, off of that Innervate. Pretty powerful card to Innervate out because uh, you don't actually lose card advantage because you draw the card off of the Azure Drake. Back over to Zwing now, and Zwing uh, might be able to cast enough spells here to just deal with that Azure Drake. If he goes Coin, Unstable Portal, Arcane Missiles, uh, his Mana Worms will both have four attack. Looks like he's gonna start with the Arcane Missiles. Draws into Akanai Soul Priest, uh, just a one mana three five. Uh, no, very uh, decent. Yeah, un unlikely to have relevant text uh, in its text box in this matchup, unless he gets something. He could, wow, he could actually live the nightmare of getting uh, Mistress of Pain off of his Shredder and just die with the Akanai in play. That would be an exciting thing to happen. You know, I might just um, coin out the Arcane Missiles now, see wh where they land. Interesting. Looks like he's going to play it slow here, slow-ish, and uh, save that Arcane Missiles. Arcane Missiles, of course, one of the best cards to combo with Flame Waker, uh, along with the coin, which he is willing to use here. Ooh, and Darnassus Aspirin is a great way to trigger Mirror Entities. Uh, unclear. Let's see, let's see if this does trigger a secret. It does. It does trigger a Mirror Entity. Uh, and that's that's a shame. Looks like he thought there was a chance that it was like Counterspell, and on the he was playing thinking, you know, if this is Counterspell, this is going to get me back into the game, and if it's Mirror Entity, I was already behind. Ooh, Captain's Parrot, not what he was hoping for off of that Shredder. Yeah, right now, I just play the second Mirror Entity. Even yeah, though you don't, you don't know there's a Darnassus Aspirant in hand, 
You but actually we assume there's not a Darnassus Aspirin in hand, given that, uh, you know, he didn't play it last turn with the secret up. It looks like he decides to go face. Yeah, he's uh, just putting on that pressure. He's deciding that he wants to be the aggressive player in this deck because, or in this matchup, because he doesn't have access to Ancient of Lore and his opponent does, so he wants the game to end before that becomes a reality. Original Word's going to use a swipe here, deal with uh, the Mana Worm and the Arcanized Soul Priest, and send his Captain's Parrot upstairs, getting Zwing down to 28. Back over to Zwing now. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to sort of weave in the hero power, but at the same time, you're coming up on turn 6, which, you know, you might see things like Sylvanas or Emperor. Yeah, although Druid is much more known for having uh, 7 drops than 6 drops. Darnass or Emperor and Sylvanas, uh, optional cards in every Druid deck. Really? Out comes the Force of Nature. Lucky that that wasn't a counter spell from Zwing. I, I'm pretty sure Zwing might. Wow! These, uh, the Shredders from both sides have just dropped the worst minions. There's a, a Lorewalker Cho now in play for Zwing, yeah. and that's going to turn off most of his hand here. He's not really it, it, able to cast most of these spells. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually one of the worst things to get. I wonder if he should ping his own Cho here. No, it looks like he's just going to decide to ping of, uh, the, the Druid. That makes sense, given that... Uh, yeah, even if you, you might give your opponent spells, but the thing is, look at uh, how much life. Yeah, you're you're kind of happy to give him spells if it's gonna kill him. Yeah, it uh, doesn't matter how many cards are in his hand if his life total is zero. Looks like uh, original word's actually gonna give Zwing a wrath here to take down that sorcerer's apprentice. Pretty reasonable thing to do, although that wrath is then gonna be able to fire right back uh, at original word and kill off his own aspirant. Archmage Antonidas, the draw for Zwing. He might be able to give both players infinite fireballs this game if he uh Actually playing the playing the Antonidas just as a 5-7 is probably the winning play right now. And then setting the aspirant right upstairs? Yeah, because because of the show. I wonder. You ah. need he needs spells. He needs either combo or do something to get rid of the Cho. I he might be able or to get rid of the um the Antonidas. Ant yeah. Antonidas. But because of the Cho, you know, Cho will give the mage back those combo pieces or, you know, swipes and things like that, which will then allow, you know, Zwing to hit face. Yeah, I, I think spells. that was a pretty good line of play. It looks like Zwing is instead going to use uh, Arcane Missiles and Wrath to try and clear the board here. Arcane Missiles, 50% chance of destroying that shade, which it does oh. easily. He's going to ping upstairs instead of casting a card like Arcane Intellect, choosing not to put an Arcane Intellect into Original Wirt's hand. I mean, at that point, Original Wirt's hand would be so filled with cards that Arcane Intellect wouldn't really help him. Yeah, especially given... Looks like he's thinking about playing the Ancient of Lore for healing, though. Uh, so he is actually maybe going to be able to get ground out, though. Although his life total, again, is so low. Looks like Zwing might be able to play uh, Antonidas and Arcane Missiles this turn, put a Fireball in his hand. Uh, and, of course, backed up with the second fireball, he's not going to need to find much more burn to end the game. Oh, uh, yeah. Antonidas, Un Arcane Missiles, go face. Unfortunately, you know, there are now a lot of cheap, powerful spells in Original Wart's hand. If he could draw a card like Emperor and live another turn, he might be able to, uh, you know, find a, a way to kill Zwing from a pretty high life total. Looks like instead Original Wart's going to be the one going down to 13. Draws Wild Growth on turn 9, the uh, the worst turn in the game to draw Wild Growth. Yeah, right now, he's uh, original words in the cast 22. He needs to use spells to sort of, you know, either get rid of the board or, you know, cycle into better cards. But if he does that, he'll give Zwing those spells and... Yeah, it's a possibility. And, yeah. It's a possibility that he was supposed to, or that he could have uh, killed off Lorewalker Cho first. Although perfect arcane missiles here, that's going to oh, yeah. enable him to trade without having to use any more spells from his hand. And now he'll just be able to play a card like Aspirant if he wants uh, in the hero power. Like, this Cho has just dramatically changed the face of this game. Oh yeah. That, but um, oh, due to the death of the Aspirant, Zwing no longer has. Word on uh, potential lethal with the arcane missiles. Yeah, <laughs> interestingly here, Zwing or original words able to kill this Cho. Oh, he's, he he only wrath to cycle. If he had wanted to, he would have been able to wrath the Cho for three, hero power the Cho, and then play the aspirant and the wild and cycle the wild growth. Oh, and wild growths with Cho is another really exciting interaction. 
Because they get both? The yeah, they get the ex excess mana and the wild growth. So it looks like uh, either because of the, the turn timer or because of the uh, that interaction, yeah. he's going to hold on to the excess mana. Uh, maybe save it for such a time as when Low Walker, Low Walker Cho is dead. Out comes Dr. Boom here. Again, all of these turns, original word is just barely holding on from not being dead to these double fireballs. Looks like finally Lore Walker Cho might die. That... It, it traded something like 10 spells this game. It's unclear which player benefited more from it as well. Out comes the excess mana created by that wild growth. Ooh, and the second Savage Roar. It's gonna fire off arcane missiles here. One at the face, one at the boombot, one at the other boombot. First boombot kills the uh, big game hunter. Second boombot puts the Darnass Aspirant to one health. You know, at this point, I'd rather be playing... I mean, excuse me, using the hero power of the druid, then potentially playing the druid of the claw. Because it gains you one health every turn, which you know your opponent has at least one fireball in hand, so you have to be worried about... Oh. Ooh, and now he has three fireballs, fireballs in hand. That is that... a large amount of fireballs. Looks like he's going to start with arcane missiles, and if two of these go face, that's going to be the end of the game. But they do not. Not at all. So now maybe he's going to flame strike to clear the board. Although that would not allow him to weave in his hero power. I mean, you do have 18 damage in your hand. Yeah, maybe he's just going to fireball the face, you know, wrath and ping the druid of the claw. Yeah, that, that seems like the play. And he's played the correct fireball as well. That's an important thing that a lot of players will miss, but he's played the one created by Antonidas to keep the uh, information hidden that there are more fireballs in his hand. That was uh, well played by Zwing. Oh, uh, yeah. It looks I like we might be going to uh, to game five here. We'll have to see. Yeah, look, looks like it. Looks like that's going to be the end of the game here. Zwing able to fire off two fireballs. Original were well aware that that is likely to be his opponent's hand. Uh, nothing he can do, though, but try and play on anyways. He's going to die to fireball and a top deck frostbolt as well. <laughs> Instead of showing the second fireball. So now we've got midrange druid versus midrange druid, if I'm not mistaken, as the final matchup between Zwing and original Wirt. That is going to be an interesting one. That matchup is also pretty swingy. Uh, uh, it, it depends. It basically depends on who draws their ramp and yeah. who draws the card to refill their hands. Like things like lore. You know, if you get a good shade off early on and your opponent doesn't have keepers. And yeah, it's, it's a very draw dependent matchup. Absolutely. You know, it's all about the cards Innervate, Wild Growth, and uh, to lesser extent, Darnass Sassy. Innervate above all. And we'll Innervate and Wild Growth are both in Zwing's hand, along with a swipe. Presumably he's going to throw away that swipe and keep the rest. Back in Original Wirt's hand, he's got Force of Nature, two Roars, and a swipe. He's going to throw that all away looking for ramp. Zwing draws into the Darnass Aspirant. That is a huge draw uh, already. His hand is looking very, very good. He just needs to get some big creatures uh, to pay him off for it. Oh, oh, oh. And he's going to just that pass on that first turn, but wow, he's just drawn all the ramp. Now, unfortunately, he could also just never draw, uh, you know, a minion to play to, to capitalize, but if he draws a card like Druid of the Claw, Ancient of Lore, uh, at any reasonable point in the next couple turns, he's going to be way ahead. Yeah, here I played the Aspirant, because it prevents your opponent from playing Wild Growth, because they have to deal with the Aspirant. Yeah, and you kind of force them to Wrath if they've got and it. since you're first, you get the Mana Crystal before your opponent. So, you know, you have three mana crystals before your opponent gets three mana. I don't really agree with the wild growth, especially because you can cycle them off later. I but... guess his thinking is that next turn he'll play Aspirant and wild growth. But he has nothing in his hand, though. Like, the thing is, if you had things like Ancient of Lore or, you know, Dr. Boom, I could see that play. But if you have nothing in your hand, it's imperative to get stuff out on the board. Like, if you played the uh, wild... If you played the Aspirant last turn... Wirt would have had to coin the either the Big Game Hunter or the Shade of Naxxramas so that he could trade with it this turn. Alright, so Zwing's gonna uh, end up getting rewarded here because that Wrath was drawn just this turn uh, and original Wirt does not have the time to play it uh, instead of having to play this Shade. Back up to Zwing now. Zwing on 7 mana, original Wirt on 3. Uh, pretty absurd. Out comes that hero power and the Druid of the Claw. Original Wirt not even able to uh, to play a Druid of the Claw unless he wanted to use his coin. Uh, not that he has one in his hand. Draws an Azure Drake, and he might have to fire off... Uh, just nothing is good here for him. You know, I think these... he, has to coin, he has to coin out the Azure Drake. He has to play a minion out. He needs to contest the board. 
Yeah, may maybe he's gonna try and come up with a way to uh, to clear here. He could use Wrath for three on the Druid. He's not gonna do that though. He is gonna coin out that Azure Drake exactly as predicted. Out comes the Force of Nature. All right. So his hand is now Force Force Roar. Very bad to draw these combo pieces this early unless you're actually uh, able to back them up with the threat of them being lethal early in the game, which they are not uh, at this point for original Wurt. At this point, you could choose to trade the Aspirant into the Azure Drake and then cast Living Roots on it, potentially, or just swipe it down, yep. innervate out to Druid of a Claw. Important sequencing note, uh, he would want to use one of his mana before trading off that Aspirant so that he could have enough to, uh, so that he would be able to use eight this turn. He's going to fire off the swipe, though, instead. Interesting choice. We'll have to see how that ends up working out for him. Looks like he's, he's just ready to put his whole hand on the table and say, is this good? Out comes the Druid of the Claw in bear form. I wonder if he'll cast the Living Roots here. Nah, you kind of want to play around swipe a little bit. It looks like that is exactly what he's debating. Kind of gives away that his hand is, is Living Roots by uh, by thinking there, but maybe Original Wirt is not going to put any stock into that. Looks like he's thinking about now firing off a swipe. Swipe going onto that bear. Yeah, Druids of the Claw are so good versus opposing Druids because Swipe doesn't really do anything versus them. Like, if you swipe the actual Druid of the Claw, it leaves it at 2 health. And, you know, if a Druid of the Claw is, you know, receiving the area of effect and of the Swipe, it's still at 5 health. Yeah, so it looks like he's just going to have to try and get another Swipe next turn to do it. Uh, but even that is not... Not, none of the numbers just line up well for original Wirt here. And he's, he doesn't have much time as well. He's very likely to die next turn uh, unless he can do something very impactful to this board state, which does not look like he's going to have the ability to do so. Force of Nature would allow him to trade with a lot of things. I guess Force of Nature might be his best line here. He could also swipe uh, and Wrath. That's also a pretty uh, viable candidate. Could also swipe and Hero Power. He is going to fire off that Force of Nature. I like this. Uh, he's going to send one into the Druid, trade his Shade for the other Druid, and then use his Force of Nature to deal two to the uh, to Zwing and two to the Aspirant. So now the board is actually... Ooh, Innervate is a terrible draw for Zwing as well. He's out of gas. He just needs to rely on drawing some burn and his opponent being very low. Looks like he's going to make some saplings here. Shapeshift, and I wonder if he'll attack with this Druid of the Claw, or Druid, sorry, with the Shade of Naxxramas. Nah, you keep it stealth. You, you want it stealth. Right now it dies to Wrath and Shade, or excuse me, Swipe, and yeah, a bunch of things. Heads up play from Zwing here. A lot of players, I think, would be tempted to make that attack uh, and try and threaten lethal for next turn, but Zwing is content with keeping that Shade hidden and uh, saying this is likely to be lethal eventually. Anyways. Back over to Wirt now, and Wirt... Kind of needs to clear off these 1-1s. One you know, they're representing a lot of damage here. He might also just try and fire off the Ancient of Lore to heal himself. Uh, or maybe he'll try and take a, a line of play that says, Look, if you draw burn next turn, I'm going to die. But any turn later than that, and I, I'll be able to live. He and also he might... could consider setting up for Force of Nature and Savage Roar to be lethal in the next couple turns. He might just do Wrath for cycling on one of the saplings. exactly what he will do, yeah. Out comes a Keeper of the Grove from his deck. Hero power the other one down and then play the Aspirant. Yeah, or maybe play the BGH since it's a larger body, although the Aspirin will allow you to play Force Roar next turn if you need to use that somehow to clear a board, which is a possibility. Looks like Aspirin is indeed the play. And if he's still alive by next turn, he can choose to Ancient of Lore and Hero Power Game if six, the yeah. Aspirin's still alive. And that is a lot of life to gain. I guess you could keep her down the face. <laughs> yeah, keepering down the face is going to be the play here. I wonder if now he'll choose to reveal that shade. Again, he probably is not going to, and yeah, he's elects not to. That would have put um, Zwing at a draw for like Living Roots or say Swipe for Lethal. Yeah, although uh, he could have gotten punished then by the, the shade getting removed by a card like Swipe, but instead it's going to allow the fact that he didn't attack with the shade Gives original work time to play Ancient of Lore here, and he's threatening to play it again next turn, which uh, would be huge. Yeah, the thing Rath. is, if he if he attacked with the shade, he the thing is, he couldn't deal with the shade and, and heal. Up heal. In yeah, absolutely. Same turn. 
And then that, he would have a lot of draws into lethal. That's the thing, like, druids can do a lot of singular things well, but they can't do many things at the same turn. Yeah, like for not, not unless they innervate. That that's the key yeah. card. Oh, and Savage Roar, is that gonna be enough? Looks that like it probably will be. Enough. Wrath Wrath Savage Roar gonna end the game here for 14 damage on the 12 life of original Wurt. And he's gonna get, end up getting rewarded for just keeping that shade hidden until that Savage Roar turn comes in. That's gonna be the end of our match. Uh, Zwing takes it 3-2 to two over Original Wirt. Great games from both players. Very, uh, very good play shown by both of them. Uh, so that's going to be the end of this match. I think we might have one more match lined up for 6 p.m. I'll have to check in on that. Once again, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, Twitch, Newegg, Rockat, MSI, and Blizzard. Uh, thank you so much for making this stream possible. So, uh, what, what did you think of that match? That was, uh, that was really, really quite something. There were a lot of <laughs> great games. That Lorewalker Cho, I think, was, uh, was one of the most exciting games I've seen, uh, pretty much yeah. ever. Yeah, as a druid or as a mage, Lorewalker Cho is one of the last things you want to see. If you're a head on board, then it's still kind of okay. It's, you'd rather, you know, having an actual minion than the Cho. But, you know, if you're behind on board, then the Cho just kind of screws you over because you need spells to come back onto the board but you can't use spells because if you use spells then your opponent gets the spells um let's see the first match if i recall correctly was the control warrior versus mid-range druid the troll warrior simply stabilized and gained so much health that you know it literally could have went through all 30 cards in the druid's deck and still would have won um, the second match was Zoo versus Temple Mage, if I recall correctly. Yep. You know, another right. one, another one of those matchups where it's like traditional counters. So, yeah, the Zoo Lock beat the Temple Mage kind of handily. Yep. To to the surprise of pretty much nobody, that matchup is the, it feels so bad as the Tempo Mage because every oh, yeah. game you have this like turn turn three through turn six, you feel like you're in it, and then you just never are. Yeah, and but we didn't see things like Abusive Sergeant or P.O. come out earlier. If those things came out earlier, then the game would have been very heavily in favor of the Zulok. Um, game 3, I want to say Game 3 was the Temple Mage Mirror Match. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Temple Mage Mirror Match, then Game 4 yep. was Temple Mage v. Druid, and Game 5 was Druid v. Druid. Yeah, the Temple Mage Mirror Match, it's basically one of those... Like I said, very draw dependent. Whoever it kind of solidifies on the board, it gets the most value out of their mirror entities and things like that. Generally, ends up winning. Um, but Zwig did, does run Archmage Antonidas in his Temple Mage, a card that a lot of people cut out. So that allows them to sort of outvalue other Temple Mages. He also runs Flame Strike too, naturally, if I recall correctly. So that also allows him to outvalue. If the game goes that far, yeah, there was definitely natural flame strikes in at least one player's deck, and there was flame strike off of Ethereal Conjurer and the others. I'm not sure if there was uh, maybe natural flame strikes in both. No, I don't think um, Original War runs an original flame strike in this deck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think game game four was uh, yes, the Temple Mage as Zwig versus um, Wart's Druid. And, you know, that's just one of those matchups where, you know, very kind of one-sided, you know, Temple Mage naturally counters um, Druid. You know, you have things like Flame Cannon, you know, Mad Scientist, Mirror Entity. Yeah, and those uh, all just ended up doing a lot of work. Yeah. So, you know, not a surprise that the Temple Mage kind of won. And then the Druid v. Druid match in which one person drew all the ramp and almost lost because his hand was empty and then and the second player drew none of the ramp and all but the almost came yeah. back but he literally had no ramp um the game might have ended a couple of turns earlier if he played the aspirant on two instead yeah, yeah. of wild growthing so you know it's one of those things that seem minor but actually could have ended up costing him the game if he did not draw that wrath into wrath into Savage Roar. For example, if he drew, like, I don't know, his own second aspirant instead of that Savage Roar, he would 
Wart would have been able to play his second Ancient of Lore, and then healed up way out of range, traded out the board, etc., etc., and stabilized. So it's just one of those things where you keep in mind, it's like, well, if you're a druid and you have a choice between Aspirant and Wild Growth, and you're on the play, you always want to play your Aspirant. You want to force your opponent to react. Even though it kind of feels bad playing Wild Growth on 3, forcing your opponent to react means that they lose tempo, and they lose card advantage, and you still have the initiative. And that is exactly what ended up happening, which allowed uh, Zwing to take the match 3-2 to two in a close series. Uh, so we're going to go to a quick break now. We'll be back in uh, something like 20, 25 minutes. At least I will be. Uh, Blitz, I understand that you are out of here. I'll have somebody else joining me to cast those games. But we have one more match for you today uh, in the High School Star League 2015 Hearthstone Winter Championship. Thanks so much for, uh, for casting with me, Blitz. Uh, no problem. Always a pleasure to cast uh, High School Star League. All right. See you, man. All right. Bye.
Miles of fire I'm losing ground And in the flesh in My world comes crashing down I'm left in nowhere No place to
trapped inside a world of pain that needs healing. I am only dreaming. Take me to a place where seeing is believing. Tell me that I'm only dreaming. Can someone take
All right, guys, looks like uh, we don't have any more matches for you today. So that's going to be the end of today's broadcast from High School Star League uh, for the Hearthstone 2015 Winter Championship. My name is Dratnos. You can find me at Twitter, at Dratnos. Uh, I have a Twitch, I have a YouTube, all under that name. Uh, also, thanks to Blitzbot V2, who also has a Twitter and stuff, for casting with me uh, that one match that we did manage to do for you. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back tomorrow with some more Hearthstone. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching, and goodbye.